Hello everyone and uh, it's my privilege to welcome you all to this uh, paper. Uh, the paper is titled Introduction to Literary Theory. Uh, uh, right at the outset, let me uh, begin by introducing you all to the title of the paper and the concepts that we'll be looking at. So the paper, as I'm sure all of you are familiar with, is slightly difficult, uh, but uh, and yet uh, very challenging uh, and very interesting one because we get to learn a lot of ideas that are associated with uh, associated with prominent people uh, in the history of philosophy, in the history of literature, uh, and in the history of uh, uh, political thought. So therefore, what are the things that we'll be looking at uh, in, in today's video? We'll be looking at five things. Uh, the first one, uh, we'll begin looking at the etym etymology of the word uh, theory or the root uh, word of uh, theory. And therefore, we will also try to understand uh, the beginning, the origin, the genesis of uh, the whole concept called theory. Uh, we'll move on to look at one or two definitions uh, of what exactly theory means and then we'll proceed to see the meaning the meaning of what exactly theory does uh, we'll also look at uh, the significance of the year 1963 uh, with regard to the emergence of theory and we'll conclude this video by looking at how theory is actually political and uh, how it plays a very significant role uh, in forming uh, political thoughts as well. So let me begin introducing this uh, this particular paper and uh, especially the concepts of theory. So to introduce, uh, I would make use of two very important concepts or phrases I would say. The first one is the moment of theory and the second one is the hour of theory. So what exactly is moment of theory? It, is, it ranges somewhere between 1980s when theory was extremely fashionable and controversial and to add to that particular, uh, uh, to those points, theory was limited to a very, very few people, a very uh, a handful of scholars who, who thought themselves to be elite. And that was the moment of theory. So theory was not easily uh, uh, accessible to ordinary common people who belonged to academia. Now a time comes somewhere in between 1990s and 2000 when theory ceases to be the exclusive domain of the minority and enters the intellectual bloodstream. Uh, when I mean, uh, when I say intellectual bloodstream, it means the academia, the universities, the schools, the colleges, uh, places of learning, higher education, places of higher education, all these places. Now that moment when history stops being the domain of the few and uh, enters into common places, that R is called or that phase is called the R of theory. Now uh, just to put a break there. Uh, uh, when I m m say moment of theory and the hour of theory, this is still not true of India uh, because uh, even in the year 2000s, Indians remained strange to theory or theory remained as a stranger to Indians. So therefore, uh, the hour of theory for Indians comes a little later. So that's very important for us to understand there. Now, uh, how, what is the origin of the word theory? The word theory uh, comes from the Greek word theoria, which means to contemplate, to speculate, uh, look at and to see. And it means to look very, very closely at text. Now, literary theory means to look at literary text very closely and to sort of look at it from di different perspectives. So therefore, theory means you can contemplate, you can assume, you can uh, speculate uh, to look at it from different angles and to see deeply into something is called theory. Now what does theory do? 
it's a st it also studies the production of meaning in text it's a distribution and it's a reception so theory also studies how meaning gets produced from a particular text how that particular meaning gets distributed among general public or general audience and how is that how is that particular meaning accepted or received by people so these are the things that theory studies so we will look at the second point a little later uh, deeply a little later now uh, so how, what is the definition or how would you define literary theory so literary theory is the organized systematized analysis of literary text the institution of literature or the canon of literature so what does literary theory do it is systematically uh, with a lot of organizations analyzes the literary text or that whole canon of literature it does that it systematically tries to analyze so uh, now let me again introduce to you all uh, another concept as opposed to literary theory the other concept is cultural theory so how is literary theory different from cultural theory now cultural th theory studies art forms films the superhero comic books sports fashion all cultural practices of which literature is just one small part so therefore i i, I hope you all have understood what i uh, the difference that lies between what is literary theory and what's cultural theory literary theory basically studies literary texts or that institution of literature whereas cultural study is a larger broader area which studies many other things almost every aspect of human life and literature is a small part of cultural theory so therefore cultural theory is a bigger area wider area whereas literary theory is a smaller narrower area so what does exactly literary theory do theory speculates meaning making practices of representation social structures films it is not random fantasizing any analysis of a text any interpretation of a text is to be based on rational thinking it cannot be uh, you cannot make general sweeping statements uh, for example uh, if you uh, if you take the poem the justice of the peace uh, you can look at the poem from number of ways but the most accepted uh, interpretation of the poem that is a conversation between a big landlord and his laborer or a slave so that's the most so theory tells us as to why the, the this particular meaning is more appropriate to the poem and why other meanings which could be derived by many other different people are not very appropriate to the interpretation of that particular poem so this speculation uh, should also see quantifiable effects of words and practices it is also a reflection of how this practices work so uh, theory also tells us how one meaning of a particular text of a poem of a novel is accepted or gets accepted by the larger audience and why another meaning does not get accepted by a larger audience so that particular process mechanism of one meaning taking center and the other meanings falling at the margins is also explained by theory so the, this is an example theory shows how one meaning precedes over the other so if you have the po uh, have a novel uh, written by charles dickens so the general tendency to look at the novels of charles dickens is to look at it from uh, the 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 angle uh, where he talks of the ill effects of industrial revolution most of the novels so the minute you pick up uh, charles dickens's novel we begin to say that this particular uh, novel speaks of the ill effects of industrial revolution but it need not be because the present generation of people could see it very differently and the a capitalist country would look at those novels from a very different angle so the the task of the theory uh, is to explain the process of rejecting a particular interpretation 
and uh, uh, and why a particular uh, uh, interpretation is accept, uh, accepted so that's the task of uh, theory however it's very important to understand uh, that the meanings of any text are never final uh, just to illustrate this and give you uh, give you an example uh, the poem lotus eaters by tennyson was written uh, of a group of men who actually wanted to go around discovering the world uh, it was uh, it was uh, never thought of as of those men who could uh, whose sexual orientation could be uh, to similar sex or to same sex but that is a possibility that is thrown up today uh, you could have a, a scholar coming up and also interpreting and saying uh, that this were a group of men who were sexually attracted to each other and therefore wanted to be far away from their families so therefore uh, we notice there the change of interpretation that has taken place uh, from the time tennyson wrote the poem and uh, today uh, in a span of about 100 years or so now uh, the next point that would be coming uh, to is the year 1963 which marks a very significant uh, phase in the emergence of literary theory uh, so let me take you all back to history uh, of about uh, 50 or 60 years ago so uh, after the second world war that's about 1945s uh, and 1960s uh, within a span of about 15 years Uh, life of normal ordinary people was coming back uh, to its normalcy and uh, you had uh, farmers getting back on road you have uh, factories uh, being set up and making some progress uh, so therefore uh, the uh, the life after the second world war was uh, war was coming back to normal now you you could also gradually see the rise of the new middle class or the people who were disillusioned by the second world war were sort of getting used to this uh, whole new idea of war and now making their lives count by living a normal life so therefore you had this uh, the new middle class now the new middle class which was previously de- denied entries into the universities in, in, in into the colleges into places of higher learning higher education began to revolt because they said just like everybody else paid fees and got entry into this uh, institutions they also were willing to pay fees and uh, and get entry into this institutions so you see uh, there is a gradual intermingling of the uh, so called elite of the previous times and the new middle class which previously belonged to the lower class started studying in the same classrooms started studying in the same uh, colleges started studying in the same universities now when you have this people uh, belong to two, two different classes coming together and uh, sitting in the same classroom and studying the ideologies are so different the ways of thinking are so different the thoughts that you come along with are so different and that may that may brought about a lot of uh, a lot of changes in the field of education so therefore uh, the people belonging to the higher class they said they would not allow the lower class people or the new middle class what we are calling them now to study along with them and that did not happen because the lower class people went on rampage especially in france saying that the nothing can be forbidden or the gates of higher education cannot be closed to any, uh, anybody therefore they tried to build the whole system of education on secular values equality for all uh, irrespective of whether people had money or not and so therefore you see when you have a uh, two different groups of people studying uh, in a particular institution you have different ways of looking at the same reality and that's exactly what theory does you have one particular text but you have multiple ways of looking at it and this is possible from 
because a rich man would look at a particular thing in a different way a middle class man would look at it the same thing in a very different manner and a poor man could look at it from a very very different angle so that's exactly what theory did uh, so the final topic for today's video is how theory is political it's political in two different ways so it examines meaning making practices so we could also look at how homer uh sort of has all these male protagonists who are heroes who are extraordinary people and the the whole life of his plots uh, revolves around patriarchal families you do not see a lot of importance given to women so how uh, how is that particular thing possible so that study as to why homer made uh, all his male characters the central to play central role in his works would be taken as a part of study of literary theory and uh, for to examine that we would look at the social context the cultural context uh, the economic context uh, and the way people lived their lives during those times so it would examine the how meanings are made or meaning making practices the second one what theory does is it upsets and unsettles established meanings of text and this goes back to the point where meanings are never final so therefore that the meaning that we assign to a text today may not retain its sanctity tomorrow it always keeps changing so theory is constantly dynamic it's not static so the so that also gives a scope to say that uh, uh, the author which is not considered important today could be considered very great and therefore we have most of the authors many authors or great scholars were not given due importance when they were living but after their death uh, people have gone back to their works examined their works and today they have received uh, great awards after their death so therefore these are the two things that Uh, ex- that explains that theory is political in the first phase it looks examines how meanings are made meanings are derived from a particular text and so- secondly it always keeps unsettling the meanings of the text that are assigned to them so uh, those are the things that we had to look in today's uh, uh, those five points especially that i mentioned to you in the first slide itself and uh, hope you are liked uh, and have understood few things that i had to say uh, thank you so much for listening to me